Hi, I'm Veronica Odeka, and welcome to Beauty and Fashion Talks here on Arise News. Join me as we chat about the latest in fashion news and beauty. Be sure to keep up with us as we stay on top of trends and key players in the industry within Africa and, of course, around the world. I've always heard the quote that says, in order to be re irreplaceable, one must always be different, which I agree with. Today's show is all about being different, and that is teaching creativity in fashion. I will be speaking with founder of 360 Creativity Hub and Goodwill Ambassador for Nigerian Student Fashion Design Week, Blessing Achu. Of course, as always, I will update you on the latest fashion and beauty news from around the world. So don't go anywhere because Fashion and Beauty Talks will be right back. Shishido Cosmetics, sold a billion dollars worth of beauty products last year, mostly in traditional stores. And that's really interesting. Uh, they said it's a problem. I don't think so. Shishido's CEO said it is due to the fact that consumers in their teens and 20s often prefer to shop online. Now, to address this problem, they decided that it would be best to partner up with and buy up small bits of startups in Silicon Valley and other tech hubs to gain expertise in artificial intelligence augmented reality and other technologies. Now, the company's ambition is to help shoppers replicate online the experience of trying on cosmetics in the store and use data from smart devices to create personalized makeup for their customers. I must agree. On to more exciting news. While everyone is talking all about Coachella, for us beauty enthusiasts, it's all about waiting for New York's beauty con that's happening this weekend. According to a press release shared with Teen Vogue, BET and BeautyCon are collaborating to produce makeup and hair tutorials geared towards women with darker skin tones and natural hair. Yes to this. This will feature black influencers with raging hair texture and skin tones, of course, showing the latest hair and makeup trends and teaching viewers such as myself and you guys just exactly how to create these looks at home. BeautyCon CEO Maj Madara said, our mission at BeautyCon is to make sure we are always representing our audience, a clear support of the inclusion movement that's been currently sweeping the beauty industry. Black celebrities, beauties such as Zendaya, Laverne Cox, and Essence Grants will also be in attendance. On to some more news. After 20 years, Mizani is creating products that suits the needs for textured and curly hair. The brand is adding entirely new items to their collection. The 25 Miracle Nourishing Oil with blends of sunflower seed, coconut, and jojoba for max hydration for natural textures. This launch is more than a new line of products, but instead it represents the importance of addressing specific customer needs for that of natural hair. Now, Mazani is prioritizing this social dialogue of inclusion to understand the needs of the textured hair consumer. With the new launch tutorial on how to use the product, it will also be available soon. Well, now on to more interesting news, an exciting one at that. Target has joined the list of retailers working to ease the plight of brown girls everywhere. Yesterday, eight new diverse cosmetic brands became available online at Target.com, with the in-store options landing really soon. In total, the retailer is adding 150 more products that are aimed specifically towards medium to dark skin, including eyeshadows, lipsticks, highlighters, along with other things, and more than 60 shades of foundation. The biggest selection considering was that each line had to be owned by people of color. For decades, women of color have had to search high and low for makeup that properly blends and matches their skin tones. And we're happy the beauty industry continues to make major shift towards diversity. It's time now for a really short break, but I don't want you to go anywhere because as soon as I come back, yes, that's right, I'm gonna have Blessing at you in the studio. So stay tuned.
Welcome back to Fashion and Beauty Talks on Arise News. I'm Veronica Odeka. Blessing Achu's love for fashion and her understanding of the needs of the fashion industry in Nigeria led her to the creation of 360 Creative Hub, which aims to fuel fashion advancement through technology. 360 Creative Hub is building an ecosystem for creatives in fashion, crafts, and the tech space. Welcome to Fashion and Beauty Talks, Blessing. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you for having me. I've been needing this conversation. Obviously, <laughs> it's, this conversation is necessary in this industry, particularly at a time like this. You've heard about everything that's happening. Our economy is growing, and we're trying to really push our fashion um, consumers. We're trying to push the fashion industry forward. So with this being said, the creation of 360 Hub, I want to know how this came about because I understand that Solutions come from problems. Yeah. So tell us about the solution that you've provided. So um, a lot came, came into play. I started mm -hmm. uh, the concept when I gave a tailor, a designer, my clothes. For It didn't get back to me uh, till after three months. Mm -hmm. And each time she would tell me that her tailor did not turn up, her generator spoils mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I was looking at it. I am a tech person. Mm -hmm. I've been working in the technology space for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, and I know that technology has a way of helping designers. So, the concept of co working space started coming into Nigeria. So, I said, okay, this is it. I went for an, uh, a tech event in Germany okay. and I saw something like that. And I came back. I saw some friends and I said, with this work, they told me how that they have been waiting for it, mm -hmm. that if I could start, it would be a good work. So you found something that from the tech industry that could actually merge with the, the fashion, fashion industry yeah. with the problem that yeah, you were having yeah. and try to create this yes. solution. Yes. So, and I said, okay, um, the, the, the issue for me was financials, mm -hmm. capital and all that. I don't have it, so I have to work for some time. Mm -hmm. So at least save up because I have some people that gave me advice. Mm -hmm. It's not easy, it's that, you know, Of course, Nigeria. everyone. So I started off by doing my visibility studies, mm -hmm. how many designers do we even have? Mm. How many of them can understand, that understand what, how to use a co-working space? Mm -hmm. How many can embrace that idea and all that? So I got to find out that those that I met and I spoke with actually people that have studied outside Nigeria, mm -hmm. and they understand that they want to unburden themselves with, you know, they don't want to have issues of thinking about light, um, of machine and all that. They just want to be creative. Yeah, which is necess which is always the case of a designer. Yeah. They just want to, like you said, they just want to design. design. And they, all the other extra stuff, they don't want to be tied yeah. down by it. Yeah, yeah, that is what I noticed. So um, when I started, I had some people come to me and say, look, can we do this? Can we do that? So with their feedback, I was able to get some things done, the kind of machine they needed, mm -hmm. the kind of thing they want to have in the hub and all that. So they are the people that push me to do what I mm -hmm. do. Because they are telling me, no, they don't want this, put this, I want this, I don't want this, mm -hmm. I do that. So I started by saying, okay, we don't have money for this, but give us this time, we'll get, we'll get his face. I don't have photographer. No, we need an illustrator in house. We, have, we need a pattern person. So that is how it come about. So basically your research was very specific. The creation of the 360 Hub was mm. really, really specific yeah. to satisfy the needs of yeah. the designers. Yeah. So what does it entail to get in there? And what happens if you're over capacity? And how big <sighs> is the space to be able to attend to all of these needs? Because I'm thinking it must be an amazing platform, and it's a great thing. So yeah. then is the problem now that you can't take any designers, no, or no, how does it no, work? No, I, I, have, I still have space for mm -hmm. designers to come on board. But we have um, our selection criteria. So we need to understand, are you a designer? Mm -hmm. It's not everybody that, that is a designer that says they are designers. Some are copycats. Mm. I hope you understand mm -hmm. that. So we need to know that you are a designer and you are here to make money. You understand that you want to make your business, you want to scale. I you need those support systems yes. to, to scale. Yes. So we have to take you on and we have space for them. Okay. And... With that, we have other people that are illustrators mm -hmm. that come to us. I say, yes, we want you on board. Mm -hmm. we can, you can provide service for these people. We have 
digital media people that are in the hub and all that. This, we have photographers in the hub. So the, in order to work at the hub, you, it has to be fashion oriented. You're fashion, not gonna, it has to be fashion related yeah, in, a, yeah. in a sort of way. Yeah. So people as um, the illustrators, photographers, me media, are they people that are working underneath your staff or are they also like the dis fashion designers that are coming in and renting the space? Because they are freelancers okay. because their market is mm -hmm. there. Yes. So if you are in a little stretcher, you are in the fashion hub, you know that you are getting, you have like about 10 people that are at your disposal to... Ex exactly, to kind of help work but, together yeah, work um, and together then also promote, also promote your business. Exactly. So tell us about how long can somebody rent the space or are there agreements that you have to be there for a year or can I come and say, oh, listen, I just need the space for one month yeah. or I'm just visiting, I need it for three months and yeah. then I can move yeah. on to the next So we, it's flexible. We did it as, as for startups. We have a one day plan. So you just have something you want to do and you just need to do it immediately. We have a one day plan. You come in, maybe you want to sketch, you want to cut. It's with as little as 1,500. Mm -hmm. So you just come in and you sketch and you do what you want to do. We have a monthly plan, which mm -hmm. is way discounted. Mm -hmm. We have a quarterly plan, more discounted. So, we have a yearly plan. so basically, if they need something, it's, it's available to it's them. It's available to them. So how long has it been open and what do you think that the value is that this hub has added to the fashion industry as a whole in Nigeria? So um, we, we started operation in um, 2006, October. Mm -hmm. And since then, I've seen people, and you can, people can make inquiries, designers that say, they just came out from the school, mm -hmm. and they jump on it, and they are working, they don't know, okay, they are doing design by the side, so they, that leap of faith, mm -hmm. will I be able to do it and all that? So when they come to the hub, and they say, okay, this person is actually... That has been successful, successful for other people. So they just jump on board, and okay. they, they start working. And so then what about the designers that have actually left and no longer use the hub. How successful do you think that this platform has been to even to create another one well, within so, this so, industry? So, so, so for those that have left, mm -hmm. some of them say, okay, they are bigger now, so the, the, the facility that we have mm -hmm. can no longer send scatter there. Exactly. So they are they are successful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a, a a baby. I call her my baby designer that came in when she was the only one. She's, she's way, she's, her production is bigger now and all that. There are some things we can cater for her because her design has gone global. She's getting thousands of orders mm -hmm. and all that. So uh, this is one of the things we want to do for mm -hmm. designers. But there are ones that even when they are bigger, because we have production capacity, mm -hmm. they are still available. They are no longer in the hall, but they still come down and say, okay, I will need to produce 10 pieces of this. I need to produce 10 pieces of this, 30 pieces of this, because it's going to so. So I want to ask you this. For the fact that you've actually had this for a, a period of time, mm -hmm. um, why do you feel that in this country where we have budding fashion designers springing up every other mm -hmm. two seconds, mm -hmm. why do we not have more hubs or more platforms that offer people this kind of help or this outreach in your own um, your own take, your own experience. What do you think it is? I think people have not started looking at that direction. Okay. They don't see fashion as a, a, a maybe a money making machine or mm. something that can help. So what I did one thing the other day. I said our oil will soon dry up. Mm. What are the other things apart mm. from agriculture? Yeah, fashion is a global exactly business. Mm -hmm. And if you do well in fashion, you are going to be a multi-millionaire. Mm -hmm. That is given. Imagine we are 180 million, and your brand is just serving, let's say, mm -hmm. a million of this brand mm -hmm. population. We have something coming into the, into the country every day, and mm -hmm. they are clothes. The people selling second-hand brands are making a ton of money. Exactly. So why won't we have this in different states. One of the things I'm trying to do is I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking, to, though I've started talking to investors, mm -hmm. I want to have a fashion community, a fashion city. So you think that this is necessary? Obviously, you've created it, and you feel like maybe people need to look inwards yeah. more about 
having these kind of opportunities. Yeah. Obviously, if the global economy for fashion is leading the way, and like you just said, from the research and things that you know, that secondhand is, so there's a need. Yeah. So if there's a need for the consumer to want to have the product, then obviously the conversation needs to continue for more of these hubs mm. to become available. Oh, yeah. I think that that's, that's an amazing conversation. And, you know, I'm going to have to stop right here because we have to go for a short break. But um, we're going to go for a really short break. But when we come back, this conversation is going to continue. Don't go anywhere. I still have Blessing at you in the studio. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Fashion and Beauty Talks on Arise. I'm Veronica Odeka. So Blessing, the conversation definitely continues. When we left off, we were talking about our fashion industry and the economy and how it's is necessary for there to be more no. platforms. No. So I want to get your take on how well do you think that our designers or our industry can compete globally, or are they ready for what our designers are learning now? Mm. That's a very big one. So mm -hmm. some of us are ready. Mm -hmm. So um, when I started off understanding and going to the fashion industry, I had some names, very big names that yes. are always out there. Yes. But do you know that we have those that are not known, mm -hmm. but they are way too talented. Mm. But because they don't have the platform, they don't have the maybe they don't understand the kind of skills they need to put in place or the mm -hmm. things to do, so they can't, you don't know them. So we are not ready in one part because we don't have a standardized process of meeting the global standards. Yes. Yeah, some people must have done that, succeeded, mm -hmm. but in, in general, mm -hmm. no. So let me ask you this. Is it necessary, though? Is it necessary? If we can't, you know, a lot of times, like we've had this conversation, the designers mm -hmm. are saying we don't have enough of the support system. Yeah. So something like the Fashion Hub does kind of take away mm -hmm. um, yeah. a lot of that yeah. help for yeah. them mm -hmm. so that they can focus. But really, are we in a position at this particular moment now, as the designers are training or as these people are learning, to be weighed down with also being able to compete globally? Or should the focus be on giving to the consumer who's already here on ground? Just making sure that it's the finishing is well done, making sure that your output, the fabric choices, and all of the things that you have within the capacity mm -hmm. here can sustain you here, yeah. as opposed to thinking globally. globally. Yeah. So we need to look within. Yes. One, we need to start training our people to understand we need to there are basics. Yes. Finishing, mm -hmm. writing, even a fashion peer, mm -hmm. a pattern drafter, illustrator, conceptualization of your design. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that go into that process. Exactly. We need to start building the capacity, the skill set for our designers to understand. I don't have to do marketing alone. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do all that. I need to just go design uh, and be a fashion designer mm -hmm. while somebody is out there. Do we have a support system that can understand that this designer, one, ten, twenty of them, I have responsibility of making sure that their, their fashion line is speaking the language they are meant to speak? Mm -hmm. Do we have that? We don't. Yes. So we need to start building those capacities. We need to start, that is one of the things I'm trying to do. Community, mm -hmm. collaboration, yes. connect. So we need to start building those collaboration, that community to understand, okay, these are before we start looking globally. Yes, let's look in what. Let's serve the Nigerian market. Let's serve the African market first. first because we yeah. have, we there's so many billion, millions yeah. of us here that we can just even sustain ourselves here and build within here, first of all, before so we start to. looking globally. So then the next question becomes how do we successfully continue to make our own industry thrive? Here for ourselves. A lot of people want to be designers because they're thinking of making money, mm -hmm. but there's, like you said, there's so many other areas where yeah. jobs can be created to offer a support system mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. designer. What do you think and what is your take on that? So my take is that one of the things, the reason why I, I started the hub is to make this known for people to understand that you have to be, you don't need to be a designer to make money in the fashion mm -hmm. business. So, and one of the uh, strategies I put in place is the fashion acceleration. Your fashion program. acceleration problem, uh, yeah. pro a program, yes. Yeah. So, the fashion acceleration is ongoing. Yes. We've extended the registration. Registration. Because, yeah. it, was, it was supposed to close yesterday, uh, yesterday but now yes. it's been. Yes. How, how much longer is it going to uh, be extended? A week plus, okay. 27th of April. Mm -hmm. So, go on and register. So, if you are a fashion designer, 
you are a fashion blogger, you think you have the skill to blog, mm -hmm. you are an illustrator, you think you, you have what it takes, you are a pattern cutter and you want to make that, you need to go and register. Yeah. So we are trying to teach these people the business side of, of fashion. fashion and the other support system other support that it can, can offer get. value. Yes. Yeah, offer value. So if you are a fashion designer, design. Mm -hmm. Let's say marketing team come in and do your marketing exactly. for you. Let a digital media consultant that is a fashion oriented come in and understand your story. Tell it to the uh, digital audience. Nigeria, we are young people. Mm -hmm. We are on our phone. Yeah. So if I understand that this site is always talking about this fine design and everything, yes. and you are good, so many people will be calling you. Exactly. You can't do everything. I mean, at agents. One. We have fashion mm -hmm. agents that sell clothes for different brands. Mm -hmm. Yes. So Sources. the retail stores, yeah, retail we have stores buyers, and buyers and, and all that. So you can be industry. a fashion buyer. Mm -hmm. Just buy from this brand, buy from this brand, and go and do your thing. Mm -hmm. And you sell to other people. Exactly. You are a stylist. You are a fashion stylist. You know who and who that needs this type of thing to go out. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have so much to do in the fashion valuation exactly. that people are killing themselves over just being a fashion designer. Exactly. So your acceleration program. It offers three months, yeah. the program of training yeah. for these people. Yeah. So what happens when they're, they're actually done? Do you kind of create that mentoring program or a job availability so that it actually is helping to build this industry that we're talking about? So, good. The fashion acceleration program goes with mentoring section. Okay. We, have, we are bringing in some mentors mm -hmm. to take these people from the journey of just starting here and all that. And within these three months in that process, we are training you to understand the business. Okay, where can you make money mm. from these skills that you've identified that you have? Yes. So we And helping them to develop the develop skills that those they skills have that they need, need yes. and even ones that so they, they can have. help them scale. Exactly. So and I partnered with a financial firm, mm -hmm. technology cooperative firm that we are putting these people in the cooperative mm -hmm. and we are packaging them to have access to loans. Mm. So not only are you offering a platform, you are also training them and you're also equipping them yeah. with the skill sets yeah. that they already have yeah. to help develop them and then push them out into the marketplace, yeah. which will then help our help. economy. Yeah. <laughs> and um, the good thing is the three best participants get to use the hub at no fee. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. at no fee. And we are still looking at getting people that can take them on a journey to understand African continents. Because one of the things that inspired me to do this is because I was able to take out, look at, like, get out of this place. Yeah, so not just Nigeria is what yes. you're trying to say. What you're trying to say is that it's further than that. Mm, yeah, you get know. out of Nigeria, mm -hmm. go to Ghana, understand Ghana market, mm -hmm. and now how we can mend it trade, to make yes. sure that, because we need to start believing that I can do it. Mm -hmm. So I, we need to start changing our mindset. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Thank you so very much, Thank Blessing. So, so people that want to be involved or they want to find out what's going on, you do have a website. Quickly yeah. share with our, our viewers at home. Um, what is the website? Uh, www.3cccreativehub.com. So on the website, you guys can get all the information on the acceleration program, what Blessing is doing, and also you can also ask her questions and she can definitely try to yeah. guide you in the right way. Yeah. That was really interesting. I'm sure we're going to have you back on the show at a later time yeah. sometime and you can tell us what new is going on yeah. with you and how you are doing your part in the fashion industry. Fashion thank industry. you for joining thank us. So well, all my viewers at home, that's all for Fashion and Beauty Talks today. Thank you so very much for watching. Until next time, goodbye for now.